Hi everyone. I'm really, really, really excited that I um, finally will do a new tutorial for the butterfly wreath that I created uh, about two years ago. All right, uh, let me change the view uh, so that I can show you all how we get started. Because this uh, butterfly is, is really, um, it, it takes a long time. I don't want to say time consuming, but it takes a long time. What I did was one side of it um, already. And then on the tutorial, on this video, what I'll do is do the other side and we'll actually connect it. So here's the beginning of the butterfly. Um, a lot of times I start with the color combination and as I look at it, I decide whether or not I need to add something else. You can do any amount of colors that you want to do. I don't know, for some reason, I think uh, either a blue or an orange would really pop in here. Just a couple of pieces. But I'll, I'll put it all together and then I'll look at it and see what exactly uh, I want to change about it. Maybe I'll just add a couple more of the darker purples because I'm thinking it needs something darker to bring it out some. So here's the beginning stage of the butterfly. Uh, so this is one side, but we're gonna work on the other side and then we're gonna put them all together. I put that over there. So first you need two heart, you need a heart shaped frame. Uh, this came from Dollar Tree, as you can see. You could get them from uh, Hobby Lobby has them. They're a little more uh, narrow and they don't have the curve to them as much, but you can still use it. You can also use uh, uh, Craft Outlet, of course. I have one right now. It's right before Valentine's Day. So if you plan on making a lot of these, go grab them. And, and you can use these for different things. I'm always trying to figure out something else to create out of frames that's already available. All right, so we need that. Um, just cutting this off. You're going to need a plastic canvas. Uh, plastic canvas. And I just go ahead and buy the longer sheets. This one came from Hobby Lobby. It's um, $2.69. If you don't use your 40% off or something, you definitely can use it on, on this to get 40% off. Um, of course, you need uh, whatever whatever color or mesh that you have. And I went ahead, I pre-cut all of my mesh. I, I did a video on how to um, use the wood burner to cut your mesh. All these are cut uh, 10 by 10, if it was 10 by 10. Because you know, uh, how be, a lot of them, a lot of the stores, don't really sell 10 inches. They sell the 12 inch. So I did them all by 10. Uh, another time I did try to just cut them by eight just to keep that wind, uh, wingspan uh, down some because it could get pretty pretty um, big and, and full. So um, 10 by eight is fine, but all these are cut in 10 by 10 or the 12 by 10. The bottom petals, which are these, and I'll show you how to make them. Uh, you can, you don't have to use the wood burner if you don't want to, because you know you cut the end. But I'll show you that. So you need pipe cleaners, preferably the colors of your your uh, mesh that you're gonna use. I cut them in three, so these are in three. And I didn't stick with my rule of whatever color I was using. I figured purple was in the inside of the reef, so. Um, it will be fine. Um, you also need uh, some scissors, a little marker or something, just so we could mark this. And what else am I missing? Oh, we also need some zip ties. And you're going to need a, a, a couple of larger ones. I got this bucket of zip ties, which have different sizes, if you can see. Uh, I think I got this from, I want to say Walmart, but I'm not sure. So it's three different, it's like a really thick one in there and then the smaller ones come in there. I've had it for a while. So it's 650 count. Um, and again, I, I think I got it from Walmart. If not, I got it from uh, Menards, which is similar to Home Depot if you don't have it. 
So just to start off, I'm always trying to save material. The one thing that um, I'm doing different that I did when I originally did the butterfly is I, I only put plastic canvas originally in the center of the heart so that I could um, so that I could attach more petals going in. But this time, uh, the last two times that I made a butterfly, I decided to do the whole, the entire um, heart shape with the plastic canvas. And I did that for one reason was to keep it in place. Because if you tried it, or if you've seen the other video, when you put it on, for example, you put it on, it slides, you know, once you attach it, it still slides until you get to the very end uh, and you attach all of them together. Uh, so, so for some people that was frustrating. It was okay for me. Uh, I did, I do like that too, because then <clears throat> I can move it. So say I finish and you know, some sometimes you, you know, looking down is different than having it on a wall. Uh, and you notice one could have been over more. I did like the fact that I was able to kind of slide that and attach it. Um, I do also like the fact that I have the plastic canvas under here and I can, um, I can put it in there and it's there and it's attached. And the only, I, um, I guess the only difference is that if I notice a gap or something, uh, I just have to add another one versus being able to really move it or take it out the back uh okay i'm talking too much so on your plastic canvas i just go on the end um i'm gonna go up a little bit oh sorry i'm out of frame i'm gonna uh leave a little space at at the coin at the tip of the heart because i need to attach this to the other heart frame um so it's it's okay if the problem when I do this, I can't join the two heart frames together well. It's a little harder. So I'm just gonna go down a little bit just so I can have a gap uh, right there. And that means that it may not cover the entire sides, but it's totally okay. So I'll take a marker, kind of mark my spot so that I could go around. And by buying this larger one, I was able to get two of the heart shapes out of this instead of buying one, two of them. They come out about the same price. After I do that, I cut my um, plastic canvas out. I drew a line. <laughs> and you would think that I would stay straight, but it doesn't always happen that way. I don't know you might be able to save this for little pieces if you're doing like the Easter Bunny that might be a little uh, that small section might be great to have but you could keep some of it so I just went okay it's, it's fine I'm gonna take my zip ties remembering I have to remember that I did go up so I'm taking my zip ties and just putting them in to attach all of it to the back. On this one, for the zip ties around here, I'm using the smaller ones that I have. I'm just gonna make sure I get every area to make sure that it's strong. I've been wanting to do a butterfly for a while, just, um, just to try to perfect my skill on it. Uh, and my big thing is working with that sensor. I really wanna try to come up with something really cute and not necessarily kid-like, because that's what I'm sort of thinking uh, some of the sensors end up being. But most of the people that buy this is usually for, it's for a kid's room or something. So it's perfectly fine. Um, I'll come up with something. I'll think of something. Oh, I forgot to tell you all that you need something for your center. I'll show you in one second. 
so I've been playing with the different sensors. Um, I'm just gonna attach this down here. Normally what I use for the center is just an old roll from either um, a piece of mesh, I mean the mesh roll that I have, um, or I use um, one of my Cricut, you know, from my vinyl, one of those. I find that the Cricut vinyl rolls are a little thicker, so if you want it, I already, I was playing with this, trying to think of something. Um, so this is one of the, I think this is one of the 21 inch that I had, um, and I just cut it. They're pretty sturdy, so it really works out good. I'm trying to make a, a different shape, so I was playing with it. But we'll see when we get there. I've also used the styrofoam. Um, let me check this first. So this is pretty sturdy, but remember, you just want to make sure it's on the back. Um, good. You could put zip ties all the way around, but you are using um, pipe cleaners to attach. working with limited space so I'm trying to decide no I am going to attach it now because I like to make sure that I am uh, bringing my wings into the body of uh, the same way on both sides so excuse me Steve um, okay So I'm gonna take one the one side that I already started. And I am, and hopefully you can see this. Because let me turn to the side. Because I already started this, it's a little harder. And maybe if I show you from this angle. So all I'm doing, and I didn't come up on this one like I did with the with I didn't come up with the plastic grid. I'm sorry. Thought I heard somebody knocking. Um, up with the plastic grid like I, like I did on the other one. But I'm just sliding the one side of the heart into the other side to connect like this. I know, I know it's a mess in the back. And I'm gonna take one of my larger pipe cleaners. I mean, what are these zip ties? Let's see if I can get it out. And attach it. Now the bigger you go on the zip ties, you have to be careful. Uh-oh, I'm wasting stuff everywhere. Uh, you have to remember, if you use the plastic grid throughout the entire butterfly, you need to make sure you have one with bigger holes in it because otherwise this won't go in. So I'm just gonna flip this over and you can see this better. So I slid, I just simply slid. Now I probably shouldn't have went over this far with my thing yet, but I'm just sliding the hearts together. I'm gonna take this one off. This is in my way. Again, I'm just sliding the hearts together. And I am going to then attach them. You wanna make sure that you, um, this is really secure. So it won't fall apart. I'm not gonna tighten it completely yet because I want to make sure, I'm sorry, make sure that they are um, tight. And 
gonna get a couple of them in there and then I'll tie it in there completely. Lost my place. So I'm going, I have mesh connected to me. So if you could see this. Just dropping everything. Let me put this on the floor. So I'm just making sure that this is tight together. So I usually do one at the top, one at the bottom, and then I'm gonna do one right smack in the center part. And it's best to do this before you start to put mesh on. As you can see, I'm having trouble. having a little trouble seeing and I have mesh already coming close but I want to make sure I get this wire this part of the frame attached together I have done it that it wasn't even across and it made it almost look like the butterfly was doing a uh, was flying don't wear long sleeves when you're doing this <laughs> as you can see it wants to uh, attach to my sleeve gonna remind you again attach your two heart frames together first <laughs> or don't go all the way to the the center of your where your body will be oh. the one thing you hate to do put the pipe cleaner backwards after I've struggled to put it in just making sure it's tight and I'm going around and through all right now I can tighten them all up to make sure they're all nice and tight everything is laying smoothly So we got this going. So this is the butterfly all attached together, if you can see. So it's it's fine. Now moving apart. I'm gonna sit this to the side. So the top wings, uh, what did I I did was kind of like the flower uh, petal. So I take a 10 inch, 10 by 10. 
I stretch it out a little and I'm just folding them the corners in together. I did this for a bottom one. Hold on. So as I remind I remind you that the bottom ones you can cut with some scissors. I did this. I hurry up and did it. It's not even. So my petal um, may not come out that well. So I did that for the bottom. Let me find the one. Okay. So again. So I'm taking it. I'm stretching it some. And I'm folding the centers. The centers don't always meet but you want it to be even as possible that you have the point at the end. Now I'm just taking it and scrunching it together in the middle like this. Sometimes I get confused on which way should I fold forward. So I'll just show you the difference. So this way feels tighter and it won't it probably won't lay right. When I go this way, I can feel that it easily goes on top of the other. If that makes sense to you. So I'm just putting the pipe cleaner in the center. And I think of the original butterfly, I actually just tied it around. But it seemed like when I was doing it again, that was so much more work. I just put it through the center and I'm giving it a good twist, and I'm coming closer, a good twist around the bottom so that it can look like this. And it's staying together. I'll do a different one. Let's see. Let's try the lighter purple. The bad thing about using the end of the roll you see how it's curling up? Again, I'm stretching this again a little bit. I'm going to the center, letting them meet in the center as much as possible while keeping my point. And I'm scrunching this together. Again, I have it like this. So I'll show you if I do it the opposite way. Let's see if that feels Sometimes if you could feel like, okay, that's not going to fold over well. <laughs> and I'm putting it in the center. Putting them together. I'm taking the pipe cleaner. And again, at the bottom, I'm giving it a good twist. Kind of around the front part. But you see how this spreads a little more? Um... But it, this is how it looks at the bottom. But let me try it if I, and it may just be because this is sort of the end of that roll, so it curls a little more. So I twist it this way first time. I'm gonna twist the opposite way and see if I get it to lay flatter. Again, I'm just going through the center. My pipe cleaner is curved. Going through the center. Pinching, kind of pinch down. And I am going to give it a good twist right around once. So, you can see the curve, uh, the curl in this, but it's not fall, it's not like this. And sometimes if you twist it one way or the other, then you get that. When you have to use the end of a roll, you don't want, want this curled up in your butterfly. So I normally take them as I'm working, let me come back to frame, and I sit something on top of it and kind of sit it aside. Hey, oh, I'm gonna fall. And all the ones that I have that's curled, um, they usually, I put them up under there just so I could get them to lay flatter. Again, I'll do one more this way. So I'm taking a center, kind of stretching out. But this is the way that a, uh, a lot of people do the flower wreaths uh, and how they do the petals. So I'm stretching out some, 
Remember, anytime you cut mesh, you're going to run into issues of fraying. The more you mess with it, uh, the more you're going to have the fraying. So it's very important, and I'm twisting again, very important with the flowers that you be careful when you lay them down and you move them around, um, that you take it piece by piece and, and kind of pull uh, the, fluff it out uh, piece by piece because it, it's going to attach because you have mesh on top of mesh um, again. So just be careful. And although I did these with a wood burner, it doesn't matter. It, it's still, it's going to snag to the next one and you're going to get some fraying. I'm putting this under my, to kind of get rid of some of that curl. Under my little thing. Do a couple more. And what I'll do, I'll, I'll do both petal, so kind of stretch it out. I'm folding it. I'll do both petals now, and then we'll just start to attach so that you can know. Uh, and I won't start doing the upper half, and then we have to stop and do the bottom half. So all of these are just going to be on the top. I pre-made pre most of them. Not all, but most of them. And I will give you a count of how many petals I used. Uh, I think originally when I did the butterfly, I counted a total of 64 petals, um, but I'm not sure. So it's about that amount. It's about 32 uh, at the top and 32 at the bottom. And it all depends on how full you want it. So for the bottom one, this green is actually a 12. Uh, 12 inch and what I did instead of measuring the 10 by 10 often I'll take the roll and I'll just fold the roll down so that I could get a triangle that's how I know where to count um cut I'm sorry um when these meet so this is actually a, a 12 by 12 but you only need a 10 by 10 um, if you're using a 10 inch mesh. So for this one, I put this into the triangle. I'm stretching this to make sure that it's right. And we've done this pedal folding um, before. I'm taking it, I'm pulling it over. I know my hands are all in the way. And I'm just scrunching the end together. Sometimes you may have to adjust the middle. So this bottom petal is a little larger than uh, when we do, I think it's the daisy wreath, um, the daisy wreath or something that we do and we do this, or I've done this on other uh, flower petals. So I usually come up a little closer and I will cut it like this. This is where I will put my zip tie or my pipe cleaner. And so the petal will be about that size. For the butterfly, what I do is I go down a little more uh, for the bottom, so it's a little larger, if you can see. Totally up to you, again, if you want the bottom to look like that. So I take the bottom half and I twist, and again, I've done this petal on a, a, another video too. I am then taking this and cutting the bottom half off, I'm sorry cutting this off and I usually use uh, the tip of my thumb is the point where I cut so like this what I've been doing differently on this I'm taking the bottom pedal and I'm flipping this I'm liking that better so if you can see that so if it's sitting on the thing I'm flipping it or I'm flipping a piece of it just so it doesn't look so much like a, a square or a petal. When we want it to look like a leaf, a wing. <laughs> I'm all messed up. So I'm flipping it a little bit. Or what I have done too is go and I fluff it as I kind of twist. 
just to get it a little more poofier at the bottom. I'm like, I like that look a little more. I do another one. She wanted a little sparkle to it, so I, I found this. Uh, you may not be able to see it. You know, this is that one. Uh, Hobby Lobby uh, has this. So this is a silver that has a little more sparkle to it. So again, I'm taking it and I put it in a triangle. Folding. Folding. I'm not big on making sure this is completely correct because like I said, I end up uh, fluffing it out or I, I flip it. So again, I'm just taking the bottom. I'm just pushing it together like so. Getting my pipe cleaner. And I'm going to attach. And cut the bottom. I'm about the tip of my thumb. And I'm cutting it off. You could go ahead and do this beforehand if you want. Um, or you could wait till you finish and go through. And you know, like some you want puffed out and some you don't. I want to find the best possible angle for you all to see me attach. So maybe this looks a little better um, from this angle. Let's see. Up a little more. So here we go from this angle. I didn't complete this. Um, it looks like I need one more over here or something. So I'll put a green uh, in here since green is really her focal color. Okay, to get started, let me move this over. To get started, we're gonna start with the wing, the, the upper part of the wings. I usually put one right here and I come in to the center. I don't do a lot around the outer ring because this would be massive. Um, so I might do one or two on the uh, outer ring of the bottom layer of the petals, but up here, I usually just put one. So, I want to make sure, let me see if I come this way. So, I am, again, I'm putting one uh, right at the top, and I'm just attaching it to the outer layer. Unless someone specifically say how they want their color palette um, pattern, I just kind of randomly pick up different different parts and I put them in. So from there, and I cannot, I would love to give you a measurement between which one, but I, I can't do that because your mesh might be a different size than mine. And what I'm trying to do is go in uh, towards the sensor and show so that it is in a layered effect, if you understand what I'm saying. Trying to get, understand what I'm saying. I think that's why it was so difficult the first time. <laughs> Trying to really explain it, because it's really one that you could put, you know, put your own spin on it. So I go down a little bit. So it's a little space in between there. Remember, we're gonna put, um, put a felt on the back of this so you won't be able to see any other plastic canvas that's coming through there. And as you put this on, you'll see that, hey, maybe I need, you know, I need to fill in that gap. Your biggest thing is getting to that center and you don't want to put too many petals, too many wings. There I am with petals. Too many wings on there because then it will sit up too high. I'm gonna randomly go down 
because this is 12 inch, I try to make sure that this comes down. If I don't stay to the back, I wanna make sure that this comes down a little further. So I'm just gonna, I can't talk this morning, y'all. Um, so I'm just gonna move this down some because I want you to be able to see every color. And this mesh is longer and because we're um, putting it in a layer effect, uh-oh, snagged on something, it will lay as such. So forgive me if I'm moving around. So I'll go in and I'll fill in this little spot. And again, I warn you to be very careful. You see already it's starting. to snag, sit on top of each other. And because we're using a plastic grid, you wanna to try to put your pipe cleaner in the two holes that's close to each other so that it lays right. So we're doing that. Can you see how I'm going with it? Okay, so I'm I'm randomly putting them in, going down. I'm staying along the enter wire on the frame just so I can see where I'm going. I'm maybe going between petals. I said petals again, right? Between uh, the wings. I'm probably going, that look like about an inch and a half apart. I gotta remember she wants the sparkly to really show. So I'm going to just start to add that in. And there. I am going to be totally honest. It is not necessarily a pattern to this. Your biggest goal is to make sure that you're going in, in an angle of, to meet the inner part of the body. So you can sporadically put them as you see uh, them fit. I really wanna make sure that this uh, sparkly part of silver really shows and that her green shows. Uh, the other ones I'm not as concerned with Ah, I'm stuck. Uh, so I am um, not putting a lot of emphasis on there. I'm going to go back in underneath that. And you may want to already know how you want yours to lay. That way, you won't be moving around your mesh as much. But sometimes it's hard to see it until you start to lay it down. Just be careful with that. I'm gonna bring another green in really close. I only go, mm, let me find my, let me find my body. I do not put the wing all the way up to the body. Like that might be too far. Uh, sometimes I, I would just attach whatever my body is. I would attach it in the center just so that I can know where that is. Normally once I have that attached, I can go closer to the body so that I can know where the wing is because your goal is to hide that, hide your, um, what do you call this? I can't think of uh, your pipe cleaner. Hide your pipe cleaner underneath that. So this, we know that my body size is gonna be at least this, but I'm gonna wrap it so I might get a little more space. So if I put that there, that might be perfectly fine. So you might wanna have your body available to you so that you can 
as you're putting them on, you can make a reference point where your mesh should stop. Then add, let me add some purple in. As you can see, I'm staying away from this very part, this very top part. I don't want it too big. I'm not on this top ring at all. I am gonna go on the second ring close to the top. I'm gonna add some of this purple in. My pipe cleaner is twisted, so it doesn't wanna go in. pieces connecting everywhere. So I'm gonna add that purple in and I make sure mine's lay as I go. What happens a lot of times when I'm doing this one side ends up being fuller than the other. I don't know if you could see that. So I wanna make sure I stay even on the different sides. Now I'm just filling in some of the spots. So it's not as many as before because I think with the first one, I did so many different cuts that it caused it to be a lot. But we, no way, let's see if we could count how many we've used already. We add a little more sparkle to it somewhere, just so it can sit out. I'm gonna go closer to where my inner part. Maybe I should switch up the angle too. So I am not on that last ring. I am on the second to the last at that top. a little more sparkle in there. I might go back in and add a, another darker purple somewhere. So I go, the way I determine where I want to start at the bottom, I kind of go where this point is in the center where I connected the two hearts. That is kind of my point where I want to start going down. Again, you might want to make reference your body just so you can know. So this one is going to be fine. I need to add another one on this side though. Now what I'll do is start at the bottom. As I said before, I laid the I made these a little longer than I normally do because I did like the fact, I was like, oh, let me try to make sure the butterfly has that little slope down there. So uh, that's what I was attempting to do with some of these. So at the bottom, I was just gonna take the bottom uh, part of the wing and I am going in the corner right here. attaching it. That's all. Same thing as before. 
I'm going up to the center. On this one, I'm making sure I layer these around because I want it to come up along this. I want this to be the longer part of the wing. So I'll go, instead of putting this on the end of the frame, I'll go up a little bit. So this is the other advantage of having the, um, the plastic grid in here because I can move it around and I don't have to depend solely on the wires of the frame. Same thing, I'm going around and I'm just moving up a little closer as I go around so I can make sure that that does a little hang to the side. Let me add in some new colors. So from my center part, this was my first one I'm putting in. I'm just going up. You have the plastic grid there, so you don't have to attach it to the wire if you don't want to. Again, I'm going about anywhere from an inch to an inch and a half between um, the next petal in the row going a diagonal. Sometimes I have to just put it down so I make sure I stay, and I, I'm probably out of frame for you all, to make sure, let's see. turned it around it looks like I was out of really out of frame and you couldn't see how it was going up so again let me see my goal is to get to the center part so I'm just going up following my way up to the center I'm not picking any specific color in my pattern I just want to I'm not going to go all the way to the very center. Here, I, again, as I stated before, at the top, I just start putting it in randomly after I've established my angle. take my body as my reference because I do want these middle pieces to kind of go the same. We're going to come down. I'll wait on that. I'm trying to 
find the best angle for you that you can see exactly what I'm doing. I'm gonna turn it this way. Okay, maybe. Maybe that's a little better. I'm just putting it in the grid and I'm twisting the back. I went on the out. Let me see, did I do it again? I might have to fix a, nope, I'm not going on. In, I was gonna tell you that I went on the out, um, outer, 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 I can't talk. I was gonna tell you that I went to the very last part of the, um, Frame, but I did it. Once you get all your cutting out the way, it's simple. It, this process, I'm getting more. <laughs> As I was saying, once you get all your cutting out the way, the process goes smoothly. I'm just finding places I need to add different colors. It's totally okay to have two colors right next to each other. This is what happened when I told you, if you don't use a plastic grid, this is what you get a lot throughout the entire um, process of making this. They're gonna move a lot. Um, and I don't, the plastic grid isn't right here because I moved the grid back some. Um, so that I could attach the two hearts. I, and another thing that I do not do, let's see, I'm out of frame again. Um, my two sides don't necessarily match each other. Uh, I just have the same colors in there. I might have more uh, green on this side than I have on this side. I think that's perfectly fine. Um, most of the time when you see butterflies, they're not perfect. That's the beauty of them, that they have different colors. I'm gonna try to move this over. As I go on the side, I'm keeping in mind that I want this to hang down further than the rest of them. So I might have to move that up. And as I get to where the top of the wings meet, I'm bringing my, my wings or petals in closer. I have a lot of green left. I might need to get another, cut some more. Again, I'm just going in closer. Almost done, y'all. At least with this part. Now I'm filling in the space, just so I could connect the two. Let's 
see as I go. As you notice, the top of your wings are gonna kind of overlap the bottom, which is fine. That's what we want to cover. I think I wanna add um, another piece in here. I have a purple cut, but I think I want another purple, a darker purple right here. But let's put this here just so I can see. I'm not a sparkly person, so when people ask me to do a lot of uh, sparkly and, and bling stuff, I have to show them, and they're usually telling me, more bling, more sparkly. Because <laughs> um, I just don't like, uh, I don't like a drawing attention to me, and I think the sparkle and the bling does that, so I have to be conscious of that. Okay. So I have a lot more green left. Uh, if you don't want it that different, like if you don't want to overwhelm one side with one color, uh, you could definitely switch this out. So I have two pieces left uh, and, it, and I don't want to waste this. So I can go in because I have a lot of silver right there uh, and I can definitely add that. I'm going to go in closer because this is a bigger piece. Either you can uh, move further up or definitely take this apart and just reduce the size of it. So I think I'm fine going in closer here with this green. And I'll take, if I find my body again, oh, it's right here. Just so I can know if I'm close enough right there. So if you can see that, I will be showing this pipe cleaner. So I want, either I'm gonna move that in um, further or make sure that my body is gonna be a little wider, but I'm gonna move this up some more because I wanna hide that. So I'm moving pretty much when you do the ones in the center under the body, it's gonna go right in the center where you connected the two. Still haven't decided what color I wanted to do um, <laughs> for the body. I think I think I'm gonna make this the other green. And again, I did say, for some reason, I feel like I need another color in here uh, to, to offset some of the lighter colors. But I might finish and hang it up and look at it and think it's perfectly fine. Uh, or I might try out the other color uh, that I thought might work with it. Okay, we pretty much have this. So we wanna make sure that it's not too far. Oh. Far over. I do have that right there. I'm probably gonna need another one. Move this up some and put another smaller one of these. So what I like to do when I'm almost finished is to hang it on the wall and see if it's any gaps, um, what I need to kind of change up. So that's why I'm showing you this angle. So I, I see that right here, it needs something. And then, like I said, I think I wanna add a, a darker purple right here. Um, so I'm gonna add a couple more pieces while sitting on the wall, uh, just so that I can see exactly where I want to go with this. So hopefully I'm not standing in your way as I add these few pieces. So right here, 
I see that I need, I feel like I need something right here. So I'll add that. And I'll go back and twist it right um, when I get to the end. Um, so I have that. I don't like how this is kind of fluffed up, but I can lay that down some. Uh, let me see. So I have that spot that I wanted to correct. And then I wanted to try to put I think I want a purple, like right here. If you find that um, it is way too thick, it may just be because, you know, the mesh is puffy or, you know, curled or something. Um, or you can simply just take a couple of pieces off. I'm trying to find the other piece. Um, take a, a couple, like weed it out, you know, kind of take a couple of pieces out of the center of it. Enough that you're not seeing I want to make sure that this is showing really well. So again, you can see, although I cut this with um, the wood burner because I'm moving it around a lot, you can see some of the fraying starting. Guess I defeated the purpose right there. So I need to kind of make sure I'm just gently pulling apart some of these just so they get fitting more. Sitting down, I can never get the best. So I like that, that more purple right there. And then I think I'm all in the camera. <laughs> I think I want a couple more pieces. Let's see. Make sure it's straight. need uh, a couple more pieces right here another piece right here I'm not gonna attach this all the way so I don't know if I want to keep that because I do have this piece right here I want this to correspond with that piece without messing up so kind of my center that I want I'll add that for sure in there. Um, and I might need another piece right there, but I'm not sure yet. I need to work with this because it's not, uh, it's not the exact same as over here, but it may just be, it's a, I think it's a, one of those light purple is curled. And so it's making everything lift, looks like it's lifting out some. So I'll play with this. Of course, when you finish, you wanna make sure you go back and trim any of the fraying pieces so you can see some, but this is huge. This is really huge. The other thing that uh, I'll do before I, I change the angle and we work on the sensor, remember I told you I take the bottom half and I either flip it or I puff it out. So I did it on a couple of them, but I'll go through and just flip some of them 
and do a little puff and it makes it look a little fuller at the bottom. So I'm just going by flipping them over. Give a couple of them a little pull apart, like a little fluff out. I did it on that side already. Some of them, I think. Just to show you the difference when you do that. My all in the camera. Sorry, I'm not paying attention. <laughs> so I'm just flipping these. Move on the other side. Wow, that lighting is so much better, right? Uh, this is the one I'm not sure if I'm keeping yet. You see the difference? It makes a difference to me. You may not notice the difference. But I kind of like the way that that looks fuller at the bottom. All right. Let's work on that center. Go for the center. Let me cut this off. Make sure it's off. Put it on the floor. It's off. But I'm just going to cut that off. <laughs> Warning of that. It's already wrapped it. So... I, as I said, I have, um, this was the inside of one of the um, the 21 inch mesh rolls. As you can see, it's pretty thick. Um, I don't know what color center. The, she's, uh, the customer suggested maybe a black, uh, but I'm, I'm not sure. So we're gonna see how it works. As I said, she wants something sparkly. I did find this ribbon that I had uh, that but it's not much on the roll, so we're gonna see if it works out. Um, and then I have an ornament um, to add to this. I think the silver may be too much in the center of this because I have silver so close. Let's look. We can see. I have silver so close to the middle that I don't know if it'll be odd or not. So I do have a suggestion. I do have black ornaments that's like glittery. And I don't know where they are, which is really bad. So for the center, all I'm gonna do is take this ribbon. I'm wobbling. All I'm gonna do is take the, the ribbon and I'm gonna wrap it around. I use a little glue to get started. I take it and just wrap it. I start it in around. And instead of making it all plain looking, I'm gonna try to just kind of twist it up to look like the body and put a little glue on there. Look like the body has some type of definition or something to it. Without burning my hand. So 
So I want it kind of crinkly, messy, sort of. Put a little more glue as I go. Can't be too messy because this is all I have. <laughs> Uh-oh, I ain't go all the way up here. If I can't hide that, I, um, I'll i paint that black right there. We're gonna see how this works out. I'm gonna kind of crunch it. So you see, I'm just kind of twisting it around. Adding a little glue as I go. I am gonna try to make sure that the bottom comes more down to an angle instead of just being nice and round. So I find my point. I'll just squeeze in the bottom. Don't add too much glue so it won't show through. So I'm doing that. And then I'm gonna take this, but I have some um, black tool. I don't know if it'll work out. We'll see. So kind of tone down some of that silver. So I'm just taking a piece of tool that I have and wrap it around. It still has the sparkly silver, but I'm thinking it might be a little better. Let me take it. This is my first time trying this. I just happened to see it sitting over there. And it's like, huh, maybe I'll tone down the silver because I have the silver so close to um, the wings, so close that that silver might be too much right there. So if I tone it down just a little bit, it'll be okay. I'm just gonna twist this. Add a little glue. Don't we love our hot glue? Be careful. It's hot. Ooh, I burnt myself. Maybe I should use some of my E6000 instead right here. I just want to make sure it stays on. So maybe tone it down just a little bit. I'll wipe this extra glue off that's showing. Let's see. And then I'll take a pipe, uh, another pipe cleaner. That's why I didn't close the bottom half. I ran out of purple, but this should work. I take another pipe cleaner. I run it through the top half. Through here. Let's see what my bottom went in. Um, so that it's like this. This is so I can attach it to the frame. That's why I didn't close up the bottom yet. So I wanna attach it to the frame. And I actually take the hot glue and run it down there um, to make sure that this isn't coming apart.
I go around the top of this so that I could attach the ornament. I'm just gonna slide that in here. Hopefully it holds. Uh, I wanna make sure it's on the part that's not like laps. But I have pretty smooth. Okay. Do I just attach that on there and hold it for a few seconds? to make sure it's on there. And then I just run some glue down there because now I could get some glue at that center. It's attaching that pipe cleaner. It's attaching uh, the head. Just give myself a couple of squirts. Go hold it in there. You know, your glue will run back out sometimes. <laughs> so I'm just making sure it's in there. On their wheel. And then I'm just gonna take this, the end part of the ribbon that I have, add a little bit of glue. Wrap it around. like a little uh, tip to it. So like a little tip at the end of it. So I do have probably a lot of glue in here. If not, here we go again. Gotta add a little more glue to make sure the back half of my tip is in there and it won't come apart. So I'm just pushing it in. This is still something I'm working on. I'm still trying to perfect that middle part. So every time I do one, I, I try something a little different. I want this to come apart. This is the back half. It's gonna be on there um, attached to the frame, so you should be fine. Um, your big thing is making sure this is on, that you don't have glue. It's almost like a microphone, right? Do, do, do. I'm sorry. <laughs> it did look like a microphone. Pretty jazzy mic microphone. So now I have this tip at the bottom. This is it. I, um, I'll add uh, eyes on here. And I want to find something really cute to add as the uh, antennas. To, on here but I have to find it <laughs> so when you so usually I just take the pipe cleaner and I don't have any black or purple or anything goodness gracious I take the pipe cleaner this is not the one going on here and I'll attach it to the back I put a little dab of glue I attach it to the back and I roll the ends, and I normally do that beforehand. So I take it and I roll each side like this, give it a little bend. I give it however long you want it. Give it a little bend. Attach that little piece like so. Might want them to spread out more. Something to that effect. See? And then I'll add some eyes on here. But I'll show you now that uh, I uh, how I attach it to the frame. 
This has glitter, so it's everywhere. Because I have the pipe cleaners, you may have to do two. Um, if it's not, if it's too long, I mean, if it's too short. So I just sit it in, sit it in the center with the pipe cleaners like this. And I then take the pipe cleaner up. Oh, I got stuff everywhere, y'all. Get away. Take the pipe cleaner. Where's the one at the top? I attach that to the frame. Or you could attach them together if you use two of them. I put a um, something to hang it on, right? Just so I can hang it on the wall. So I attach that to the frame and then this part will go to the frame also. So now I have it on the frame. Now you want to make sure you go back and make sure your petals are up against, let me change. Let me come down some. Make sure your petals are up against the body. As you can see, you see a couple of them. You can see that. So either you can adjust these and move them in closer. I lost the one. Or add a few more. You got, this is the one I said I wasn't sure about. So I'm gonna go closer to the body. So I'm just going up, try to go up under there as far as possible and get that in there. Like that. I think I'm just gonna adjust this one. I'm gonna untie this and adjust it. And I'm gonna go under the body and get a little closer. Remember the, the frames are right here, so you have to go over them a little bit to get right up under that body. That one is okay, and I may need one more right here. Over here, I do see, if you can see. I'm just gonna adjust this one too, uh, and move it under the body. If I grab the right one. want to come out okay so I'm gonna move kind of roll you know just push the body over just a little bit just so you can get right under that body let me put it down so straighten out my pipe cleaner I'm just gonna roll it a little bit just so I can make sure I'm right under this body Can't find it. <laughs> this one isn't attached. I can't find it. Where are you at? I can't find the pipe cleaner.
only bad thing, like they started to curl up, so it's not coming through the back as easy. So that's fine. I think I need one more here. Let's see if I have one. It's just a small gap right here. This could be moved up also to match the other side. I'll move this closer under the body. almost done. Okay. I'm going to slide that up a little more so that could be equal or even to that side. like a many one right there but I said that right okay can you see I'll go in and fix these petals now if I'm gonna need the I'm gonna put one right here uh oh I do have a purple one a light purple one okay so I have this one I'm gonna put this light purple uh, under here as far as possible. I'm just feeling for the back. You could keep flipping it. Uh, I try to not flip too much just because I don't wanna mess, mess up the mesh any further oh my god what's going on with your pipe cleaners it's bending that's why I got it. Hope I went further far enough. All right, it fits in a perfect. So now I'm hiding all the pipe cleaners as close as possible to the body. Now I just straighten out, make sure everything is good. I like the little black on top of that, that silver. Kind of tones it down, but it's still sparkly. So now what you you have to do, you see this mess? Yes, a mess. All you do um, is simply take the pipe cleaners. <laughs> I know nobody wants to do this part. This doesn't look like it's all way in there. Uh, type, take the pipe cleaners and you're gonna try to attach them as much as possible. The only problem that I have ran into is that because I've cut the pipe cleaners in three, they're not reaching to one another as they would if you had longer pipe cleaners. But I don't care because all that extra humps in the back, um, I'd rather have them short and I try to lay them down flat as possible. Um, so I just literally go, any one that I could attach together, I try to attach them together, make sure that they're, uh, they're tight um, if they cannot attach, I try to twist it as much as possible so that I can lay them flat. Remember we're putting, ouch, um, you don't want this to go to someone and you have all of these out and they're going to scratch up their door or their wall. So the goal is to get these as flat as possible. 
uh, attach them if you can. If you want, you can also go and cut them down to make sure. But literally, I'm just going through trying to lay them as flat as possible on here. Uh, and if I could attach them, I will. If not, it's fine. And what we should have did before doing all that, um, in the very beginning, if you have another heart shape, um, you could go ahead and do that. If not, you could take the, you could take the, um, the felt. So once I twist all of these on here, lay them flat enough that it's not gonna poke through. So some of these can twist together. I know you guys don't wanna watch me twisting, but just wanna give you an idea how to get them down enough. But we should have cut the felt oh, in the heart shapes prior to. That way you can easily just be done with it, lay the felt, the felt on top of there and glue it down. So I'm gonna try to flatten all these as much as possible Just giving you an example on one side. These are laying down. If it's too much, uh, of course, take some scissors and cut them or your uh, wire cutters and cut them. Um, I try to take the felt and I cover up the entire uh, back. I do try to, if you can see this, keep. Um, keep a couple of pieces on the top and the bottom. I try to keep that open as much as possible, but I try to keep it in a spot that isn't noticeable. I mean, like a lot of the felt, I mean, the pipe cleaner isn't that noticeable. Look like this is flipped. Um, let me flip that back. Just so, like if someone is hanging it on a wall or, or if it's on a door, you don't want to just put the uh, something to hang it, like a, a pipe cleaner or a ribbon, whatever you're going to use. Uh, you want them to be able to secure it to the door. So I do leave a little opening on each side of the heart. And I normally, when I mail this off, I put one pipe cleaner in the center so that they can hang it. And then I also give them a couple of extra pipe cleaners so that they can go and I might a lot of times I do uh, put one at the top at the bottom just so that they can know what I'm doing with it so that it can lay so I'll, I'll just attach a pipe cleaner up here uh, or on the sides so that they can secure it on their wall or their door but I take this the felt I'm not finished twisting so I'm not going to necessarily do it um, take the felt and I I literally, and I try to get the bigger one, I literally put it on there uh, like this, and then I cut it evenly. You may, to save time and make sure that you get it on there right, cut the size of the heart frame. That way you have it um, before you start. I might just do that this time. Uh, <laughs> same thing with the middle. I take the pipe cleaner and I put it around like this, just so that it won't be lopsided or teeter. If I hang it, I, so I go through one side, each side, and connect it. So if they want it not to show at all, of course, they can make the pipe cleaner uh, smaller, just so it can literally just hang on the wall. And normally when I send my thank you note, I just explain that to them on how to shorten the pipe cleaner. Um, so that they can hang on their wall without the pipe pipe cleaner, the pipe cleaner being noticeable. So that is pretty much the tutorial. I again, I'm gonna finish twisting off the back of this. I'm going to. I don't. I think. 
I have to go purchase some eyeballs. <laughs> so I will um, go purchase some eyeballs and find me something to put as antennas. Go through it. I'm gonna trim any with the with my best scissors, not the ones I've been cutting stuff with. Trim any of the the frays that I have. I have a lot right here on the end. Uh, so I'll go back and I'll trim that. And this is our butterfly tutorial. Thank you. I know it's a long one. Thank you. If you have any questions, if I missed out on something, um, something I didn't mention or anything like that, let me know in the comments because we can definitely talk about it. This is my baby. I absolutely love uh, doing these. I don't like doing the cuts, but I do love doing these. Uh, I was so proud of myself that I came up with this. You know the crazy thing? You would think, because I love butterflies, that I would have one for myself. <laughs> but I don't. So I, I'm going to one day sit down and make me one. I really want uh, to do one in red. That's my sorority colors, red and white, but I think I'm going to do red and silver. Um... If you stay with me to the end of the tutorial, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Don't forget to, because everybody told me I have to say this, <laughs> to like and subscribe. I will see you all later. And again, I, I can't thank you enough if you stay through this entire video on the butterfly. I hope you enjoy it. Uh, again, if you have any questions, let me know. Bye.